I think this is going to be a terrific panel. We have uh, some great experts up here um, to tell to us about an issue that I find very interesting, big data and big traffic, and how data is going to be helping us save lives, save time, save fuel when it comes to our time on the road. The car is still playing catch up. Every day I have to remind myself that Jaguar Land Rover have end users, customers, be it passengers or drivers, and all of their expectations about the, the in-vehicle experience, they're not set from their radio at home twiddling the dial now, they're set from the likes of the apps on the Android, on the Apple devices. And how can we simplify this huge influx of data produced by Inrix and, and other companies and actually provide that in a meaningful format to the driver when they're operating the vehicle. Safety comes into it, but really it's finding the appropriate data to present to them at an appropriate point in time. And that's, that's really where we're going now. Similar to the, the previous panel, how can we create some of these multifaceted use cases that combine the fact that you're trying to park the car with trying to listen to the radio, with wanting the latest sports score to be popped up on by SMS on your phone. And that's really the customer expectations. And, and hopefully, as a panel, we have the companies, we have the power to solve that. But there's so many other companies out there as well. How can we really produce a solution where if I go from a Jaguar to a Land Rover to a BMW product, that data will follow me? Um, and just as you were saying on the, on the Ingrix uh, big data set, how can we make it usable by the masses? How can we almost democratize it? And on the DSRC side, how can we make this work, not just in the US, not just in North America, but worldwide? I, I'm in a tricky situation. I have to sell cars into 174 markets. Um, selling cars means a lot for my pension scheme. How can we continue to do this and continue to change going forwards with those customer expectations? I, I would say really simple answer, and maybe I'll just give an experience. It's the data is way better, and the software is way better. Mm -hmm. In the last five years, we have um, uh, our family, one of our family vehicles is a Toyota Sequoia, so sort of mainstream SUV uh, Toyota. It has HD radio uh, traffic services is provided on a nationwide basis by um, iHeart Media, which is one of the larger broadcasters. And I'm, I, I think Inrix actually provides the data, but I might be wrong about that. Um, the uh, uh, service is integrated into my nav system, so I punch in my destination as anybody would do in a nav system. Um, you get what you would expect in a typical Waze-like experience. It colors the road red if they're stopped. It puts up construction signs or uh, yield signs if there's accidents. Um, and that's fairly standard. What has the la latest generation has done, again, data is getting better, software is getting better. It will prompt me and say, um, we noticed the traffic on the route is heavy. Would you like me to change the route? So what, it will actually go in and reroute me based on a way that has, has um, uh, less traffic or doesn't have the accident or doesn't have the tie-up. That didn't exist even two or three years ago, and to have it integrated in the center stack um, in a very user-friendly and simple, simple way, it's a prompt, and I press yes, mm -hmm. you know, one button, and there it goes, reroute, turn here instead of there. Um, it will only get better, we know that, because that's what technology does, uh, but you're actually seeing this generation by generation, 203, 040, uh, and it's making a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, take a little bit of a different tact on, on both parts of that, but I think one of them is the panel we have assembled today. Very diverse. And the fact that two or three years ago, the panel might have, you may not have had any depth. Today, you can, you can swap out, maybe not quite as well, but <laughs> swap out any of the four members on the panel, and we could have a different OE up here talking connectivity, a different pipe to the vehicle talking connectivity, a different integrator, a different data aggregator, and <laughs> there's, there's, there's another one out there. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't be as good. Wouldn't be as good, but, you know, the, the, but the fact that, that today you've got some depth there, whereas two or three years ago, we didn't have that depth. So we're at least all talking the same direction. We're all moving in the same direction, and, and it's not just a small group, it's a much broader group that's working on there. So I take that as a definite success. But I think one of the, the things and, you know, th that, that's a negative is I look at it as, what, what have we impacted? Have we impacted lives positively with connectivity? And by impacting lives positively, have we reduced the number of crashes and fatalities on the roadside today? And to be honest, 
I don't think that connectivity's gotten us there yet. I think it's got the potential to get us there. I think better integration within the vehicle, like the last panel, will get us there. Getting us out of bad traffic situations with the stuff Inrix is doing will get us there. Uh, getting that better pipe into the vehicle. But ultimately, until we can reduce the number of crashes and fatalities and we can document that due to connectivity, I think we still have a long way to go. It's, it's nice to be able to sell more cars. It's nice to be able to have a better driving experience because you're connected all the time. But at the end of the day, and the statistic is, uh, 34,000 lives per year lost in the US. Until that number comes down due to connectivity, I personally don't think we've done our jobs and we, we can do better. Yeah, so uh, what's changed in the last couple of years? I, I think the easy answer is more. Um, it's, you have more cars. I mean, obviously you have more devices, more smartphones, more, more processing power. Uh, we've, we've, you know, just sort of more of everything. Uh, more coverage, uh, even even in terms of the network bandwidth, um, and and I think that that is lending itself to what I'll call the next generation of of services, right? Two years ago, three years ago, it was we can collect all this data, we can collect all this GPS data, and we can figure out where all the cars are, and we can give you an idea of how bad traffic is, right? And that I mean that's a really cool trick. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a great that's a great thing to do. Now we can start to say, okay, we know where the accident is, where is the end of the queue so that we can warn people behind it so they don't go plowing into the back of it and don't cause an accident, don't cause a fatality, don't cause a problem, so that we can tell them in the fog, in the rain, at night, when there's been an accident, that there's been a backup that's now a mile long, where is the end of that? How, you know, not there's an accident two miles ahead, there's an accident two miles ahead, and there's a queue that stops a mile ahead of you. Hit the brakes now. And so I think the other thing that I would say is it's, you know, it's not just the bandwidth of what's going in the car or some of the services, but you've also got um, the capabilities that the OEMs are building into these cars mm -hmm. in terms of knowing ambient temperature and the wipers are on and the analog brakes kicked in and traction controls are kicked in and all this data that is floating around this incredibly complex computer with four wheels on the bus that can be shared then so that you can do interesting stuff like drive where the black ice is, right, on the roads and do other really interesting tricks from a safety standpoint um, that I think are, are incredibly compelling. And so um, it's, it's how is all that going to come together? How do you move beyond just location speed, direction, uh, you know, positioning to knowing what's going on around you and using that data in a, in a, in a comprehensive and crowdsourced way so that it's, it's compelling and it, and it benefits everyone.